I will show how we can utilize this microscope for more than just imaging covered by our basic video. I will demonstrate how we can use our EPS detector for elemental quantification and mapping. For the elemental analysis or chemical analysis using EDS technique, we will use EDS detector, which is basically this component here. It has this big wire where we have to have liquid nitrogen just to cool it. The detector needs to be cold to, to operate. Now, the detector also needs to be at the right distance from your sample. So if everything is well aligned, we have a mark here, that mark. The, the detector should be at this position. If it's not, there is a handle here. You can just rotate this handle to move the detector closer to the sample or farther. Uh, but basically, you just need to bring it to this point where there is this red mark. Make sure that it's around this position. This gives you the optimum signal. Once your imaging part is aligned and you are satisfied with the image quality, uh, you want to use EDS detector for chemical analysis of your sample. First thing, make sure that you are still between 10 and 11 of the working distance. Second, find the area of interest. Uh, this is my area of interest. I want to look at the at a piece of silicon wafer, which is this on aluminum stuff. So I, I just want to demonstrate uh, the use of this detector, how we can distinguish between different elements and, and create an elemental map. So let's say this is a good area, I, I want to image it using chemical composition, make sure that the image is still in focus. Uh, grab an image for your reference, let's say we do the scan speed 5, this gives us relatively nice image quality. There are different ways of capturing the image, of course, which I have explained already. But you want to capture this image for your reference and to compare with the elemental maps, then you know, because this gives much better quality images than the EDS software. So once you capture the image, save it. Let's call it silicon. Um, I will use. So this is your reference image now, uh, with this at exactly the same conditions, the same magnification. To start the scanning, uh, go back to continual scanning. Have let's say speed, scan speed two or three. Then go here to the SEM menu, scroll down to the external scanning, and you will see the, the image closes, and you will have this external scanning uh, information. Now we will switch to another computer, the computer which controls the EDS detector. For the use of EDS detector, you will need this EDAX Genesis software, uh, which is on the desktop. Just open it. You will see this window. Now, first thing is to make sure that you have the right voltage. So, depending what you use. I, actually, in our case, I just use 20 kilovolts, so I don't change anything, but if you use 30 or 10, you need to modify this number. First thing is to look whether you even have any counts, whether the, the, the detector is live. Look here at the bottom line, there are a number of parameters. The first one is counts per second. Uh, this number needs to change over time. This uh, indicates that, that this is a real number and the detector sees the X-rays. And also, this number should be relatively large. The optimum value should be around 2,000. Now we have a slightly lower number, 5,600. It's okay for our demonstration, but normally you can increase this number by increasing the dim 
intensity, you have a variable values up to 20. Also, you need to have your detector in the right position and the sample at the right height, uh, which means the working distance between 10 to 11 millimeters, and the detector at the red mark. This will give you the maximum signal. Now, to make sure that everything is working properly, first of all, when you open, you are in the spectrum tab. There is also image and maps line tab. But in the spectrum tab, clean this just to, to erase all the spectrum and then start collecting just to see that you have correct signal. Now, with the spectrum, these numbers here will be in red font. So, this gives you information that the spectrum is continuously acquired. You can look more carefully at the spectrum, for example, by expanding it or moving to the side. You can look at the peaks. You can go to home and have again the same view. There is a home icon here. You can zoom out, zoom in. So there are different icons to help it. But you always can go back to your home view. So there, everything looks fine. We can stop it now. Now we have just couple elements. We have copper, a little bit of copper, but mostly aluminum and silicon. If there is a peak you are not certain about, you can basically add additional element here, type it, let's say iron. We don't have iron, but I can show what to do. And then iron should give you a peaks in this location where you have these lines. Of course, we don't have any peaks. Now, if you want to scroll and look for another element, you can, for example, just move at one atomic number at a time and see where the lines should appear. You can also go the other way. So this is a good way. If you expect, let's say, selenium in your sample, you can look for it, uh, even if the software doesn't find it automatically. But most of the time, peak ID will be enough. Peak ID will automatically find and identify all the peaks. So in our sample, we really have actually two strong peaks, silicon and aluminum, and I will show how to create elemental maps using these two peaks. To create maps, go to this maps line tab, make sure that you are here, erase the spectrum which was there before, and collect a, a new spectrum. It doesn't need to be a long acquisition time, just to make sure that you have the, the peaks needed. If, you, if peaks are not identified right away, pick ID button again and make sure that they are properly identified. Right now we have only two peaks, silicon and aluminum. We can stop this acquisition and now go to the collect maps part of the software. Here there are several things which you can do. For example, you can change the map's resolution. Of course, higher the resolution, longer it will take to acquire. So the useful resolutions are either 128 by 100. This will be quick maps, but the resolution will be poor. If you want better resolution, but it will take four times longer to acquire the same amount of intensity, it will be 256 by 200. So let's say we select this one. We will collect up to 1,024 frames, but this again can be modified. I mean, you can select any number, but nice thing of having a large number is that you can always stop at any time if you decide that the map is already good. The dwell time is fine, so everything is fine. You already selected your elements. You have aluminum and silicon. Make sure that both of these elements are highlighted like this. Otherwise, you will only collect the maps of highlighted elements. You can also change the color. So you see right now we have aluminum blue, silicon cyan. Let's change this. Let's see what we have. So let's say we use, for silicon, we use yellow. 
for aluminum we will use red and make sure that both are highlighted okay and then close it so with this we are ready to collect the map normally we could have an image in addition but the image quality on this in this software is really really bad that's why it's recommended to collect a good image using just regular test scan software so this will be our silicon wafer you need to give a name of the file before you start this will be in the bitmap file format and i will have it in this folder once you name it just save and it will start the acquisition and you can view in since we only have two elements this will be an image but again this image is very low quality and you don't need to use it and actually it's, it's really useless but the, the things which are useful are these elemental maps this will be our aluminium map this is our silicon map and even after the first scan we already started to see that we have a nice silicon wafer on our sample after several scans where your map quality is satisfactory and you want to stop you can always click this collect maps button again and then the software will ask whether you want to stop immediately or at the end of the current frame so of course i recommend to, to wait till the end of the current frame and then automatically save the data so make sure that this box is checked here so now it will be just until the end of this current frame and everything will stop sometimes you can see where you are at the moment we are somewhere here at this unit so it will be just a few more seconds and this is the end if you want to see how it turned out go back to the desktop find the data one folder which is here and then test and let's look for our maps this is our map no, the, this is the deal so this is your just bitmap file of silicon map and the same you have for the aluminium map so these are basically two files which you need for your mapping. Well, the last thing I want to, uh, so this is the mapping, and then of course you combine it with your reg, uh, regular SEM image just to show what are the elements in your map. One more thing which I want to discuss when we talk about elemental mapping is how to extract quantitative information from the spectrum. So we have the cumulative spectrum here, where we have aluminum and silicon tips, and we want to know what's the aluminum and silicon concentration. This has to be done in the spectrum again. So we go back to the spectrum plot. Uh, we have the spectrum collected. We subtract the background. So click the background and you will see this thin blue line. This is your background. After this is done, we just hit the quantification button and it will give us this table. These are these two elements, aluminum K alpha line and silicon K alpha line. And it tells us that we have 20, almost 22% uh, weight percent of aluminum and 78% of silicon. This is also converted into atomic concentration, which are very similar in this case, 22 or 23 and 77. Of course, everything needs to add up to 100%. So you can always copy this table, uh, because unfortunately the, the software doesn't save it. So you, once you think you, will, you want to have this information, just copy it to clipboard, open notepad, for example, copy there and then save this notepad file perhaps it in the same folder quantification and make sure it's in a text format 
so we can close it and then always go back to this file. This is our file where we have all this quantification information. So that's pretty much all what you need to do to, to know about EDS analysis and EDS mapping using this detector. At the end, just make sure that you close the software, that you stop everything, that there is no acquisition going and just close the icon, copy your data and you can leave this computer on. Once you are done with your elemental mapping and you want to change the location, go back to the SEM tab and uncheck this external scanning and then you will see a live image again. And if you are done with the sample, you need to go through a normal shutdown procedure. So lower the magnification, go back to the wide field view, stop high tension, so press this HV button, it will turn off the, the emission, and remove your sample. So I just demonstrated how we can use EDS detector for elemental mapping and quantification. If you have any further questions or concerns, please find me in room 010, call me or send me an email and I try to help you as soon as possible.